everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, okay, I was doing something else. I, w I was I was wanting to look into this thing that uh, Elder Gong said in the last conference, October 2021, where he said, trust what the scriptures call in process of time. And then he references Moses 721, where it talks about uh, the city of Enoch being taken up into heaven. I wanted to do this because uh, today, well, not so much today, but uh, yesterday and the day before, he was here in Wichita. There was like a multi-stake conference that was going on. Elder Gong spoke to um, the women uh, 18 years and older, I think it was, and then that was on Friday, and then yesterday, on Saturday, he spoke to the youth, and that's one uh, that I watched, and then he wasn't there today, uh, but we had Elder Godoy, which is a, a 70, and, and he was presiding today, and um, so I, I just thought, you know what, I want to talk about what he talked about to the youth, and then I wanted to look into this um, this thing that he said in conference that really stood out to me, where he referenced the city of Enoch being taken up in process of time. So as I started to look into this, uh, one thing led to another, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to do just like a shorter video about what he talked about yesterday to the youth, which I thought was kind of interesting, but. This video turned, or this other portion of it, uh, the in process of time, became a thing unto itself, <laughs> okay, as I was researching this. So, so let, let me get you a sense of what I was trying to do. So, it says here, trust what the scriptures call in process of time. With God's blessing, process of time, and continuing faith and obedience, we can find resolution and peace. Now, that's in the context of this scripture, I believe, that he's referencing, which says, And it came to pass that the Lord showed unto Enoch all the inhabitants of the earth, and he beheld, and lo, Zion, in process of time, was taken up into heaven, and the Lord said unto Enoch, Behold mine abode forever. Okay, so I feel like that's the deeper meaning of what he's talking about here in, in regards to finding resolution in peace. We're getting close to the second coming, and <laughs> I, I don't know um, if this process of time, because we're, we are going to, you know, I'm, I'm operating under the assumption that most people alive today are going to be around for the second coming, and therefore those that are righteous are going to form uh, the New Jerusalem, and of course we have the stakes of of Zion all throughout the world. But um, we're going to have we're going to continue to have the stakes of Zion, and then we're going to have a New Jerusalem all together. It's going to be a society that will match um, Enoch and his people, and there is going to be a point where we're caught up with the with the dead who are going to be resurrected. We're going to be translated, just like Enoch was, right? So th this is like what I'm trying to get at here. He says that this is in process of time. And I don't know if that's referring to the whole church together as a unit. Uh, it goes through this process in process of time all together. Or if it's talking about individually. Um, I don't know if it's the type of thing where it, it, the, the scriptures make it sound that when the translation happens, it's going to be like a mass event that happens at the same time. And so maybe what what's being referred to here is that all those who are going to be part of that, they're all part of this process of time. And when the time comes, that's going to happen. Or it could mean that maybe kind of like individually, one by one, it's going to happen. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but, um, anyway, okay, so that, that's what kind of started it off. So I went over here to the scripture citation index, um, and I, I noticed something, okay, so over here, don't, ignore this middle column, okay, over on the left, this is where you can read the scriptures, over on the right, under the, 
under this tab right here, Citation Index, it has all the books of scripture, all the canon for our church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And then you can see here there's a number underneath each book. This is the number of references that general authorities have made to scriptures contained within that book. And that includes General Conference from 1942 until present, as well as the teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, as well as the Journal of Discourses. Okay? So it's all those, it's all those together. Now, <clears throat> pay attention to some of these numbers. I want to show you something. So Genesis has 3,000. Okay? So 3,000 out of the ones that we can see right now, Genesis has the highest. 3,000. So we go through the rest of the book, uh, uh, the Old Testament. Okay, now we have Isaiah with 4,000. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so the top books that are quoted in the Old Testament are Isaiah first and then Genesis second. Okay, interesting. New, uh, New Testament... Matthew, uh, with a whopping 10,000 uh, references, that's kind of amazing. Luke with 4.2, John with 7. Okay, let's keep going. Keep going. Revelation uh, with 3,000. So, uh, even though it's not as much as the Gospels up here, it is uh, quite a bit that Revelation is quoted. Okay, now let's look at the Book of Mormon. <clears throat> Excuse me. We got 3.3 .3 with 2nd Nephi. 4.7 with Alma. And, okay, so Alma is the one that's quoted the most, which, which is kind of interesting because if I would have guessed before seeing this, I would have thought that maybe 3rd Nephi would have been quoted the most. But, no, it's uh, Alma. Alma, and then 2nd Nephi, and then 3rd Nephi. Okay, Doctrine and Covenants, uh, the way that this is laid out, like, the Doctrine and Covenants isn't laid out into um, separate books. It, it's all, you know, all the sections, so it, it's kind of hard to really compare this to other books of Scripture, but here you go. Okay, now, Pearl of Great Price. You have Moses with 3.1. So, it's not the most frequently quoted book, um, but it's up there. You know, it's probably within the top, um, maybe, probably like the top ten, maybe. If you if you were to take all the books together, I should have done. I should like maybe I'll I'll do like a, a spreadsheet, and we'll we'll just list it all out. I should have done that before this video, but um, Moses, which is a tiny tiny little book is quoted more than Genesis. That's really interesting. That's, that's just to kind of give you some context. Okay? So this tiny book gets referenced quite a bit. Quite a bit. Okay, so let's click on Moses. Here are the eight chapters. And you can see that the one that's quoted the most, or sorry, referenced the most, is chapter 7. Chapter 7. After that, it would be chapter 1. So, chapter 7, this is the one where uh, Elder Gong references Moses 721, talking about uh, Zion being taken up in process of time. Alright, so you go in here to Moses 7, and... Um, this is kind of what it looks like as you go through it. it. You know, you have like 1, 5, 2, 13 times for Moses 7, 4, 1, 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, da, 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 da. Okay, so you get the idea of like what it kind of looks like. The first scripture, I pulled out the ones that are quoted the most. Uh, sorry, I keep saying quoted. Referenced. Referenced the most. Starting with verse 18. Okay. Go down here, verse 18. Now, what I had to do, because what I did is I put this on a spreadsheet so we can look at it easier. And uh, it's a little bit more difficult 
compared to like when I do the spreadsheet, um, looking up specific words and search terms in general conference talks, that's a lot easier to count up. But doing scriptures is harder because as you can see, if I was looking at verse 18, uh, you have this one right here, you know, Moses 7, 17 through 18 and 21, one time, Moses 18, 202 times, Moses uh, 7, 18 through 19, four times. So I have to like go through each one of these things individually and then count it up. And then I put it here on a, a spreadsheet that's the same type of thing as uh, the second coming words and terms that, that I, 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 I've done over here with the phrase tracker is what I'm calling it, the phrase tracker. So I have this scripture tracker. I'm going to show you what we came up with. But first... I want to um, I want to read the scriptures, and then we'll go through here and see how often it comes up and during what years. Okay, so the first one <clears throat> by itself is uh, verse eighteen. It says, "And the Lord called his people Zion, because they were of one heart and one mind, and dwelt in righteousness, and there was no poor among them." I find interest in this verse because it, it basically defines what Zion is, right? It doesn't say the pure of heart, but it, it does say <clears throat> one of heart and one of mind. And then it, it elaborates that uh, everyone's dwelling in righteousness and there's no poor. So that that's kind of like a, a reference, I think, to the law of consecration, okay? It seems like that's one of the defining characteristics of a Zion people, a people worthy to be taken up and translated, right? And so, um, if they're referencing this verse a lot lately, then maybe they're telling us that the time is now, or this is the goal, we need to try and get to this state of being. Be Zion, one of heart, one of mind which means like no contention, uh, being one in purpose in righteousness, okay? Dwelt in righteousness, right? That goes along with one in heart, one in mind. Um, and then no poor among them. So it's like, be ready to live the law of consecration. Um, are, you, are you personally at that point where you'll consecrate your time, talents, money? Uh, would you be okay with switching over to an economic system where... Um, uh, different from what we're doing right now. You know, not communism, not socialism, but just earning, like, producing what is needful for yourself and family and for your wants, but then giving the rest of it to um, to others, right? So th that's something that we should probably all ask ourselves. Okay, and then verse 19 is the next one says, And Enoch continued his preaching in righteousness unto the people of God, and it came to pass in his days that he built a city that was called the City of Holiness, even Zion. Okay? So, talking about Enoch building Zion. Uh, after having preached righteousness unto the people. The next one is verse 21. We already read that. Uh, this is the one the in process of time. Okay? Now we have to go all the way down here to, sorry, it'll, it'll come up any second now. Verse 62, and righteousness will I send down out of heaven, and truth will I send forth out of the earth to bear testimony of my only begotten, his resurrection from the dead, yea, and also the resurrection of all men. Uh, remember, Resurrection, even though that's like something, it seems like just like a typical common gospel concept, uh, really, like the main resurrection is going to happen at the second coming. So I now view resurrection as a second coming concept, even though it began when Christ was resurrected 2,000 years ago. I'm viewing this as like a second coming type thing. And righteousness and truth will I cause to sweep the earth as a flood, to gather out mine elect from the four quarters of the earth, unto a place which I shall prepare, in holy city, that my people may gird up their loins and be looking forth to the time of my coming, for there shall be my tabernacle, and it shall be called Zion, a new Jerusalem. 
So it's interesting because it's talking about gathering Israel, essentially. Um, gathering to, in this case, it's talking about New Jerusalem, but it, uh, we know that it's gathering to the stakes of Zion. And then there will be, I think, a, a good number of people that go to the actual center place of New Jerusalem. And it says, uh, <clears throat> looking forth for the time of my coming, that's referring to the second coming. So this verse is talking about the resurrection. It's talking about missionary work and flooding the earth with uh, truth and righteousness, preparing New Jerusalem and looking forward to the second coming. So this is a this is kind of a big second coming scripture. Now remember these scripture these verses that I'm going over. These are all the ones that are uh, quote or <laughs> that are referenced the most out of chapter seven. These are the ones that are referenced the most. Okay. And then the last one is the last verse. And Enoch and all his people walked with God, and he dwelt in the midst of Zion. And he and it came to pass that Zion was not. For God received it up into his own bosom. And from thence went forth the saying, Zion is fled. So another scripture dealing with uh, Zion, you know, the city of Enoch, being taken up and translated. So... Um, I mean, just look at this. So here, here's 18, 202 times. Uh, let, let's let's look at the the raw absolute numbers really quick. So that's 18, um, 19, 20 times, and then 21, 21 times. Okay, and then the next one was 62. Right? Yeah, 62. So look at all these numbers over here. I mean, there's like a 16. I, I didn't do every single... I just did like the, the top the top ones, okay? So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 15, 1, 1, 1, 16. Da, 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 da. Go all the way down here. And then you get to 62, 54 times. And then 69, 72 times. Okay, so I picked like the, the top... The, the top ones, basically. All right, now let's look at the tracker. Okay, so I have these in order. Uh, verses 18, 19, 21, 62, 69. The first one, Zion, one heart, one mind. The definition of Zion. Um, the next one, Enoch built the city of holiness. The next one, in process of time, taken up. The next one, New Jerusalem and the second coming. And then the last one, Zion is fled, taken up. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's start to, let's go up and let's see what each decade looks like. So, in the 40s, uh, the only verse is verse 62. New Jerusalem, second coming. And that's it. That's it for the 40s. Okay, the 50s. Okay, th there's more in the 50s, but it's only these two verses, verses 62 and 69. Let's look at the 60s. Alright, the 60s, there's more. We have more going on. Uh, let me see if I can... If I highlight all these, does that... Does it add it up down there? Yeah, it does. Eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah, eight times. So... In the 50s, five times. In the 60s, eight times. Okay, let's look at the 70s. Uh, the 70s looks like it's a lot more. 13 times. Okay. Let's go on to the 80s. It uh, looks like it's gone down. Just eyeballing it in the 80s. Yeah, 11 times. Okay, let's look at the 90s. Let's see. The 90s, not looking too good either. 12 times. Okay, let's look at the 2010s. Geez. Let's look at the 2010s. Or, sorry, the 2000s, I mean. Um, 16 times. Now let's look at the 2010s. 10 times. Now let's look at the last couple years. <laughs> the last couple years 
in the 20s 16 times alone just between 2020 and 2021. We're only at the beginning of this decade. Okay. And then if you, uh, if you look at the last few years, including, um, 2019, so let's do that. That's 20 times, <clears throat> excuse me, 20 times. And look how in 2020, all, all, all five of these verses are referenced. And then look at, uh, under here for one heart, one mind, uh, Moses seven eighteen six times in 2020 719 twice in 2020 new jerusalem second coming 762 four times this is the first time out of all these years that we've seen anything above a two anything above a two the only time that I, that that happens is in the year 2020 once with New Jerusalem and Second Coming, once with Zion, one heart, one mind. Okay, and you know if you just if you just look at it, you just look at the colors, you just look at um, the white space compared to the colored space. You can tell you can tell that there is an uptick. Um, there's an increase of referencing these scriptures within the last few years, starting in 2019. I'll be, I will be really interested to see what, what comes up this next general conference. And then in October of this year, but I, I'm going to make a prediction that this trend will probably continue. You know, th this is the same right here. Okay. Cause right here, we're looking at scriptures that are being referenced. This looks the same as over here with uh, these individual words and terms. Okay. I mean, look, look at this right here, global of the veil, um, ongoing or continuing restoration crown of glory. It's like, it looks very similar. You have like these darker colors that are up toward the top which are the, the last few years. Look at this. Enoch, uh, planet, his coming, great and dreadful, king of kings, uh, uh, of one heart, restitution of all things, millennium, comes again, prepare the, prepare the world. Okay, so it, it, it fits like the same pattern. It's the same. It's the same. So, uh, it's just more proof to me. To me, this is more proof that this really is happening. That we're we're at a point in the church unlike any other time before now. The only other comparable time is back in the 70s. I've said that like a million times. But I mean look look at this right here. For for all these different scriptures, this is one of the few cases where the 70s uh, does not compare to right now. The 70s is basically just like any other decade. So that that's the thing that's interesting to me is that with the majority of second coming uh, words in search terms, the 70s are al almost always just like a really heavy period of using those words in search terms. Um, Okay, and then the only other comparable time is the last couple of years. But the difference is that uh, with the last few years, there are certain things that are not heavy in the 70s, and they're only heavy uh, in the last few years. So that's another way of saying that um, the last few years uh, does not really compare to any other time. There is no other time that references all the different things, okay? Not just the majority, but all of them, all across the board. All across the board. And this is an example right here. These scriptures, uh, talking about Enoch, translation, New Jerusalem, Second Coming, all of these are referenced within the last few years, and a lot, okay? So, uh, it... it <laughs> This is a time when we need to just really be aware of um, our situation. You know, it, it doesn't matter what year you you were born, lived in. Um, now is always the best time 
to make sure that you repent, that you're righteous, okay, it, always, throughout the entire history of the earth, because when it comes down to it, personally, on a personal level, you could die at any time. But what we're approaching right now, the second coming, is like a, it's almost like a universal, um, kind of like death or judgment event, like it, it is, it is for those that are living a telestial law, uh, their their lives are literally <laughs> going to end, and I don't need, mean to make light of it. It literally going to end uh, when Christ comes and cleanses the earth. Okay, so and uh, you know, putting that aside, uh, there's all sorts of judgments and stuff coming on the earth. We want to make sure right now, like we, we should already be doing this, but especially right now, since judgments are coming down and we're approaching this second coming event. We really want to make sure that we qualify for all the different blessings uh, that could be ours during this time, including uh, maybe escaping some of, the, some of the judgments and the pun punishments coming on the earth, um, being able to associate with the church of the firstborn, right, Wh which is the celestial people within the church that are living celestial law, Um being translated as soon as possible, uh, just all the different things that are associated with the second coming. Now is the time. Now is the time. Um, okay, so I just want to read this right here really quick. This is talking about Melchizedek, and we've we've talked about him recently. Um, so this is interesting because I think that we could compare this to ourselves right now in the last days. Verse 32, and men having this faith coming up into this order of God, meaning the Melchizedek priesthood, were translated and taken up into heaven. And his people, Melchizedek's people, wrought righteousness and obtained heaven and sought for the city of Enoch, which God had before taken, separating it from the earth, having reserved it unto the latter days or the end of the world. Um, so, again, uh, in process of time, if I had to guess, I would think that that's kind of referring to the church as a whole, getting as many people as ready as possible for the translation event when we see the sign of the Son of Man, because it, the scriptures seem to say that that's like the, that's when it happens, from what I can tell. So, um... We want to make sure that we're part of this process and we're ready to go and be just like the people of Melchizedek, uh, you know, being righteous and striving to, uh, you know, trying to seek for the city of Enoch. Now, they're, they're going to come down, right? But we want to be here, greet them, be part of it, be translated, and uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So that's all that I have for this one. I think I'm going to try and do more videos looking at the at scriptures, the ones that are the ones that are quoted the most often, because I think there's probably a lot that we can learn from that. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you had any thoughts, questions, anything that hits you. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.